going on guys? I hope you're all having a great day. Today we have a very nice upgrade coming to the second gen. A very needed upgrade as you guys know if you've watched my videos these last couple weeks or so. I've been having a little trouble with my steering. We started with a steering stabilizer. We got a new one from Rough Country. And now we're going to be replacing the track bar on this truck because as you're going to see here in a minute, I'm going to show you guys a before and after. I'm going to get my brother What the Duck to go ahead and sit inside the driver's seat as I jack up the front axle and he's going to turn it left to right and you guys are going to see that track bar move up and down on that ball joint which is the reason why this second gen and all other second gens have problems with their steering with the track bar so that ball joint uh, goes bad over time. I mean it's been 17 years or so since the truck came from factory. We really can't be too mad at it but it's definitely something that we need to fix. We got a new track bar from Dodge Off-Road and as you guys know there's a lot of opinions in the diesel community especially the Cummins community but when it comes to steering upgrades, uh, long arm kits, reverse shackle flips, anything like that as far as suspension goes or steering goes with the Dodges, you guys know, you guys can all agree, Dodge Off-Road best company hands down I wouldn't recommend anybody else wouldn't put anything else on my truck personally let's jump right into showing you guys the kit I think you guys are really gonna like it I just unboxed it myself and I'm impressed already with the quality of this stuff so let me show you guys uh, what it all looks like we're gonna walk you through exactly what you get in the kit and then we're gonna show you guys how to install this thing and also before we do install it again I'm gonna show you guys the before and after of the track bar currently the play in it and why my steering is so bad all right guys, so as far as what you get in the box when you order their track bar, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what you get. First of all, I wanna talk about these instructions because I've never seen a company give better instructions than them actually. Um, they go from all the way putting your vehicle on level ground, putting it park, uh, putting the emergency brake on, and you know blocking the rear tires, all the way until they walk you, they even give you pictures along the way, how you set up these bolts and the bracket it comes with all the way step by step, even how to center your front axle. They even recommend, which I'm going to do, is I'm gonna to try to center it the best I can, but I'm gonna get an alignment tomorrow. First thing in the morning, I'm gonna drive it up there. I'm actually off tomorrow. I got a, a Monday off, which is crazy for me being in the Army, but I got a Monday off. I'm gonna go there first thing in the morning, and which is just like a couple miles down the road, and get it aligned. And it's only gonna be, I think, $80, they said it's gonna be. But I was just kind of impressed with the instructions. So you get the instructions, you get some monster freaking bolts that are definitely going to last forever. No question about them. It, and it shows you in the picture, like I said, how to exactly set up these bolts with these, this bracket. We're going to show you exactly how you set this bracket on. It comes with like a nice little Dodge Off-Road decal. I'll go ahead and actually cut this open. Gives you a nice black durable finish on it. So it's gonna look really nice under there. So this is the bracket that you're gonna to use to mount your track bar. And of course the steak and potatoes of the video, the track bar, and it's adjustable too. So you just adjust this, you spin this, that's how you get it to center your axle. And then you tighten, of course you tighten it back up. Don't forget, you always tighten that back up. We'll get into all of that, but that's how you adjust it. That's how it is adjustable if you do have like a two and a half inch leveling kit or something like that on your truck which I have so my axle currently is I don't think it's completely center uh, which definitely isn't help and then it's adjustable on this side as well so it's black heavy duty I mean this thing has some weight to it this thing is definitely well built and it eliminates the ball joint so up here eliminates the ball joint and you see the your little grease points right here which we're gonna have to grease this up as soon as we get done installing it. Uh, I don't see a grease fitting on this side. I wish you guys could feel this. This is very high quality stuff. So that's what you get. It's pretty self-explanatory, pretty simple. We're gonna show you guys step-by-step -step how to install this thing today. It's definitely worth doing it yourself if you have you know, just regular tools like a jack, stands, blocks for your tires, and just the regular sockets that you need. Um, anybody can pretty much do this. Don't go to a shop and get this done because they're gonna charge you like four hours of labor or something crazy like that. So we are going to get started taking the old track bar. Actually, before we do that, uh, I'm gonna jack up the front axle. My brother's gonna get in the truck and I'm gonna record from underneath him turning the steering wheel and then we're gonna see exactly before and after the differences. All right guys, so rather than getting underneath the truck, jacking up the front end and showing you guys that way, 
we're actually going to do a road test. I think that's going to give you a better perspective of what's going on and with the problems I'm having. So my brother is going to have the camera. You can already tell as I'm sitting here talking to you. Um, the truck doesn't steer straight going down the road. Uh, it veers off to the right. I mean, you can see the play I have in my steering. Look at this. I mean, I'm going straight down the road. See the play I have in this steering. It's not tight at all. And when I was at the alignment shop a couple, not even a couple weeks ago, maybe like a week and a half ago, they jacked it up, you know, showed me the whole thing. They told me that they couldn't give me an alignment because the track bar was so bad and the alignment wasn't going to do anything. So they told me I need to replace the track bar, then go back to them and get an alignment, which is what I'm doing right now. But I figured this road test will show you guys kind of a better perspective of the issues I'm having with this track bar. So we're going to turn around. Actually, we're going to speed up a little bit right here it gets to about 55 and then you'll really be able to tell the sloppiness in the steering so I mean you can probably just see right here I'm trying to keep this thing straight down the road I mean it's not this isn't the worst Dodge steering in the world I know probably your guys or maybe some other friends trucks have maybe been worse in the past whenever you went to fix them or something but I want to have my trucks do straight down the road at all times I don't want to sit here and and play around my steering like I'm doing right now the whole entire time. So we're gonna turn around up here guys, get back to the house, get this new track bar on, and then I'll tell you guys kind of the before and after and if it improved my steering or not. All right guys, so before we get started taking this old track bar off, just a couple safety considerations. We have two six ton jack stands on either side with a backup three ton jack in the dead center. Also, of course, we have our emergency brake on and we have a 30 pound dumbbell supporting the rear tire so that it surely does not roll. So those are our safety considerations before doing this job. Safety is always first, of course, when doing anything underneath the truck. So my brother is going to be holding the camera as I take the first two major bolts off so you guys can see exactly where they are. All right, guys, excuse the dirty wheels. I got to give her a bath, but we're going to start on this side. It's our driver's side when we start this project. The first thing you're going to need is a little bit of a breaker bar, a 22 millimeter, and some needle nose pliers that you're not going to drop. And you're going to take off this little cotter pin inside of here. We went ahead and hit this with WD-40 last night, which is always a good idea when doing anything steering related or brake related uh, because, you know, these things can get in there pretty tight. So I'm going to take this cotter pin out. This is a 22 millimeter castellated nut that I'm going to take out. Next thing we're going to do is we're gonna grab our 18 millimeter for this side. This is gonna be our passenger side. We're gonna put it on the bottom end of the track bar and we're gonna take this off. Again, we hit this with WD-40 last night. We're gonna hit it with the breaker bar, take this old track bar off and then check back with you here in a minute. All right guys, so we just got the track bar off, the original track bar. It was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna get off, honestly. It's just that 18 millimeter bolt on that side. We're also using our air gun, which I mean helps a lot, but you don't need one, but it makes it a lot faster. Um, the 18 mil on that side, very easy. Just need like a two foot breaker bar or so, and just you know give it a little ump. And this has been on there since factory, so as long as you spray the night before WD-40 or JV Blast, you should be fine. Uh, same thing with this castellated nut. I'll show you guys right here. This cotter pin. I mean, that's pretty much what's left of that cotter pin. Not really anything, but you're not gonna reuse this anyway, so it doesn't really matter as long as you get it out. You just need those needle nose pliers. The cotter pin right here, 22 mil on that side. And then the brake line bolt, 13 millimeter. And I believe we're gonna have to reuse this. I'm not for sure, I will let you guys know, but you know, of course you're gonna keep it anyway for the time being. And if we are do gonna have to reuse that, I'm gonna get a wire brush cleaned up a little bit. So what we're going to do right now is figure out where all of our bolts go to our bracket that holds our track bar. So we're going to look at our pictures provided by Dodge Off-Road. We're going to figure out where all these bolts go and then check back with you here in a minute. Alright guys, you ever had a project that actually went together smooth? Knock on wood, but this one has so far went together really nice. This bracket, now the brake line is up here. You're not really going to be able to tell, but if you're sitting where exactly where I'm sitting, you're going to see this brake line that runs along this subframe and it's a 13 millimeter in size. That is where your brake line is gonna connect to this bracket that holds your track bar. Now, this is a 24 millimeter in size bolt. It's a hefty bolt. 
that you just have to have one buddy hit it with the socket up top and you hold it down here with like a box and a wrench or something just to, or a socket just to get it to sit still. We hit it with the air gun. It, it's all real firm, it's real strong. There's no moving this thing. And then I believe this one was a 19 millimeter. I think it was a 19 millimeter actually that uh, this, this one closer to the decal, if you will, of the bracket was in size. And then for this one, uh, we hit it with the air from the bottom and then we went up top atop the subframe is the longer bolt that was in that uh, bag that we showed you guys this is the longer bolt of the two or of the four and it goes in from the top and the nut goes on the bottom and the bolt goes the bolt in goes up top you just feed it through the hole screw the nut in hand tight hit it with the air hold your box end wrench up top I think that is again a 19 millimeter and then it just goes right on now what we're about to do right now is go grab our track bar bring it over here and start adjusting it to where we can put it inside this hole, mount it. Uh, well, we're first gonna mount it on this end first, and then this end right here. We're gonna mount it here, run it up, and adjust it. We're gonna turn it into where we can, you know, hopefully get the axle center and be able to get it close enough to where we can drive it to the alignment shop and get it, you know, professionally aligned. Um, but we're gonna get everything moved over here as far as the track bar is concerned, get it lined up, and then check back with you here in a minute. All right guys, real quick, one thing I didn't mention when I was beneath the truck was this spacer on the top, that 24 millimeter. It comes with a spacer from Dodge Off-Road and I ended up not needing the spacer. I'm not sure if they give it to you because maybe lifted, more lifted trucks, maybe a little bit lower trucks need it. I'm not really sure. Uh, depending on the setup you're running, you might need the spacer. But I'm just gonna set it aside for now because I don't believe I'm gonna need it. Also, before we get underneath the truck, I just wanted to show you guys the track bar really quick again. This side right here is gonna go on our driver's side, so it's gonna look something like this. This side, driver's side. This side's gonna be passenger side where your oil or your grease fitting is. And the bolts that were in the hardware bag, these are the other two bolts that were in this bag I showed you in the beginning of the video. The diameter is a little bit different, so they can only go in one way, so you don't have to worry about confusing your bolts and you know putting it in the wrong way. So this is gonna go in first. We're gonna place this in first. Tighten it up a little bit, but keep it a little bit loose just in case we gotta make more adjustments. And then we're gonna go into this side, put it in the, we're gonna untwist this, make our adjustments, try to see if we can get it to, or feed our bolt through there. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be about this many turns, I don't know, we'll see as soon as we get down there. But as soon as we, you know, can fit this bolt in, then we're gonna twist this nut down. Twist this nut down, tighten it all the way, I'm showing you this out here just so you got it kind of can see it a little bit better. I know the lighting's bad down there. And then tighten this up all the way. Then once we're done with this, we're gonna have my brother sit in the driver's seat. He's gonna turn the wheel, make sure everything, you know, doesn't make any weird sounds. Uh, make sure, you know, safety's good. Then we're gonna take it on a test drive up and down the road, just make sure everything's good, no, uh, no mess ups or anything. Then tomorrow morning, first thing, we're gonna get the alignment, like I said at the beginning of the video. So we should be done in a few minutes. Everything's been going together really quickly. And let's get underneath the truck, put this thing on. All right guys, just got done putting the track bar in. The Dodge Off-Road guys do a very good job at giving step-by-step -step directions. I was very impressed with this. Everything went together exactly like the instructions said it would. Um, the couple things important to note, this is your Johnny joint side. You're gonna use the stock bolt that the stock hardware for the Johnny joint side that goes to 150 foot pounds. So just grab your torque wrench, put that down to 150 foot pounds. Then your hem joint side goes on the driver's side. Use the bolt provided by Dodge Off-Road for this side. 180 foot pounds on this side. Also on your Johnny joint side, I went to put the lube gun on it and it already come, I guess it comes pre-lubricated because as soon as I started to squeeze some lubrication in there and got it on the uh, needle, it started to spurt out immediately um, with, with the red lube. Let's see if I can find my, my lube guns over there. But um, So I guess it comes pre-lubricated, but double check. Um, just make sure to lube in there, of course. So that's all good. I got everything tightened down. Got all these nuts tightened down. I got it adjusted. Um, my brother went inside the truck and turned the wheel and it's really tight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a test drive down the road. Um, and then first thing in the morning, we're still gonna get the alignment done at the alignment shop because this truck's due for an alignment anyway. Um, and plus they'll be a lot better. They have the equipment to do it a lot better than I do. So um, 
pretty much. I mean, I think this took about maybe an hour and a half to actually, you know, start to finish. And plus I was recording the entire time, so it'll probably take you even less than that. But the biggest things are, go ahead, I'll get out from underneath the truck. The biggest things are WD-40, also with the hem joint, um, it says in the instructions to, you know, you can't lubricate the hem joint, it doesn't have the tab for it, but you can just spray WD-40 on the hem joint to keep it lubricated. Uh, and then you can also buy, I think, uh, a hem joint that you do have uh, the ability to lubricate it. You just have to ask for that extra, I think. Um, but don't quote me on that. But WD-40 for the hem joint side, your normal grease gun for the uh, Johnny joint side. And I'm trying to think if I missed anything. Uh, normal tools, you guys seen all the tools I used. I believe 18 millimeter on that side. Again, stock hardware. And then 21 millimeter on this side I believe ended up using. So we're gonna wrap this up. We're gonna clean up some tools, take it on a test drive, and then I'll catch back up with you guys here in a minute. All right, guys, I'm backing out of the driveway right now, and I can tell you at low speeds, idle speeds, it feels great. It feels like it's a brand new truck, honestly. I am very surprised at the noticeable difference. Now, we're gonna be able to tell, obviously, when we hit 45 on this road, but I'm just giving you guys kind of the real time. I just backed up first time, no lie, just backed up. This is my first reaction. I think steering wheel cover's coming apart. Definitely needs an alignment, though, look. Definitely needs an alignment. The dang steering wheel is sideways, but it's very, look at this, look at this now though. Very, very tight, which is what we expected. Now the alignment shop that I'm gonna drive to is like a mile and a half down the road, so it's not gonna be a big deal. So I'm driving around looking all crazy right now, but the point is, oh, I knew this was gonna happen. You guys knew that was gonna happen too. Of course you're gonna need an alignment after this kind of stuff, but uh, the point is it's, it's tight. We're gonna hit about 35, 40 on this road and then see if we can, you know, it, still have that tightness in the steering wheel. All right, here's 40 miles an hour. Still very tight, it's shaking the truck. I don't know if it, <laughs> we, can, we can barely keep the camera still. We're gonna drive down here a little bit more, go up to about 45 and see. I mean, if the steering wheel was, <laughs> there's a steering straight down the road, it's just slanted. God, it needs an alignment. But, I'm so happy to have this new track bar on here. It's gonna last probably the life of the truck, guaranteed. All right, we're at 45 now. Still very tight in the steering wheel. When I'm turning, actually, when I hit that bump, it felt very smooth, too. Kind of helps out with the ride a little bit. I hit that bump and like no sounds were made, nothing, it was very smooth. That's another plus, I guess, of the new track bar. Um, Thumbs up for sure for Dodge Off-Road. I definitely suggest their company. They have, you can, I'll put their uh, website in the link down below, probably the first link in the description below. They have all sorts of suspension steering upgrades for these Dodges. They've really figured it out. And the instructions are second to none. I've never had better instructions than that. They actually show pictures of how the bracket's supposed to be set up and how the bracket's supposed to mount underneath too. This road is very bumpy and it's actually, the truck's taking it very well. But I'm going to turn around up here. I'm going to go ahead and end out the video. There was a couple things uh, I wanted to put out, like, um, you know, I know you guys are probably going to comment down below, hey, you need to fix this, you need to fix this. You know, I seen this that was kind of looking a little off when you were underneath kind of thing. It's going to come with time, guys. Like, the things that you saw underneath, there's a couple things that I'm already tracking that, hey, you know, I need to replace this. There's a couple things, you know, we're going to we're gonna get it replaced. It takes time. You guys know that. It's a build. It doesn't happen overnight. Uh, I just wanted to put that out there uh, before I end out this video. But if you could, please leave a like on this video. It helps so much with the YouTube search results, guys. You know that. Also, if you could, if you have any questions that I can answer, I normally do time lapses and things like that. I know as I'm working on it, but this time, uh, the lighting was kind of iffy in the garage underneath the truck. So uh, I'm working on getting better lighting equipment right now so that I can do the time lapse and set it up and it looks really good on this camera. So I'm working on that. I know I normally do time lapses, but I couldn't in this video. But if you have any questions that I can answer on my end, feel free to comment them down below. I respond and look at every single question down below or every single comment. Or if I can't answer it, maybe something about the kit, uh, the link to Dodge Off-Road is gonna be down below as well so you can ask their support team. Just going through some back roads right now in the woods. Probably going to hit a deer one of these days. But I'm going to turn around. Appreciate you guys watching all the way to the end of the video. And I'll see you in the next one.